Oftentimes, uh, my client will send me an email about six months or a year or so after we're finished the project, and they'll ask me, you know, we love the project, it's still working for us, but we just need to make a couple of changes. How much is that going to cost us? Or perhaps they might say, you know, we've, we've got the program in English, and now we want to do it in Spanish. Uh, is there any way you can uh, bring up that project on your computer and and add a, a, a new language. Or maybe they just want a, a nice clean uh, encoded file for their website. And so what I like to do is, as a final step on a project is save my program, archive my program uh, in, in several different ways that make it easy to access in the future. Let's go ahead and uh, call up uh, this uh, program on Mongolia that I've been working on. And uh, I have completed the project, and so it's time to archive it. One of the first things that I will do when I archive a program is do a save as, and uh, you can access that option under the iconic strip here at the top of your timeline window. Uh, just click the little down arrow here and one of your options is save as. And uh, what I like to do is save the program. Uh, this is a very small file. It's just uh, really your edit decision list. But it represents a lot of work that you've put into this program. The, maybe you've taken a week or a couple of weeks in uh, coming up with all of these edit decisions. And, and so it's nice uh, to have all of that work saved in uh, maybe several different uh, hard drives. So you'll never have to worry about uh, having a hard drive go down and uh, losing access to this project that you've spent so much time on. It's kind of like uh, saving or backing up your uh, word processing files, you want to be sure that you have them backed up in, in several different places. The next thing that I will do is uh, archive the project by uh, saving it to the highest possible AVI file as well as the highest possible MOV file. And uh, so what you want to do is go to your project and set uh, some in and out points and once you have those selected uh, using your F11 key you can bring up the the print to file option and uh, what you're looking for well if you have lots of hard drive space you could save it to the Canopus lossless this will give you the absolute best quality AVI file that you can export uh, from your timeline but uh, in reality the Canopus HQ especially if you are on the HQ fine setting is uh, probably almost as good. Uh, for the naked eye, most people would not be able to tell the difference when viewing an HQ, a Canopus HQ fine file uh, right up alongside a Canopus lossless. You'd hardly notice the difference. So I usually just uh, uh, go with the Canopus HQ, but do make sure that you are on the online setting, and that gives you just a little bit better quality. And then, rather than save it to the system drive or the um, project drive that you've been uh, editing on, what you want to do is save it to a completely separate hard drive, probably a removable hard drive that you uh, have plugged into your computer specifically for backup and archival purposes. And uh, so select that. And let's make a folder called uh, Mongolia Backups. and uh, give your file a name and hit save. And this is a fairly fast process uh, depending on the speed of your computer it should uh, go much faster than real time. Uh, on mine it looks like this 12 minute program is only going to take about three and a half minutes. But we'll put you on pause while that works. And uh, once that has completed, you'll see that the uh, AVI file does come down to the bottom of the bin and is also saved to your removable hard drive. And once I have the AVI file, I'll go back and do the same thing and this time do the highest possible quality uh, movie file. I'll select the QuickTime, use the uh, QuickTime exporter. But uh, I like to make a few adjustments to the settings once this pops up. Yeah, let's go into settings and uh, change the settings up here. We like to move it up to best and uh, multi-pass. Hit OK, hit OK, and 
You can give it the same name really because of the different file extension. And we'll go ahead and save that as well. I might have mentioned that uh, this process of making an MOV file at the highest possible settings uh, using a multi-pass uh, is a lot longer than <coughs> the uh, making an AVI file, much longer than real time. This 12-minute program you see, we're already running at 41 minutes, <coughs> and uh, it's uh, just at 94%. So uh, when you're making these MOV files, you might want to set it up just about the time you're ready to take a little break and uh, that way you can have the computer working while you're off having fun. All right, with those two files uh, safely backed up to an external hard drive, a high-quality AVI file and a high-quality MOV file, as long as your client doesn't need any changes to the program but just wants you to do something with the program that you've not already done for them, like say they want a uh, DVD file or maybe they want a PAL conversion, or perhaps they just want to encode it uh, several different ways, then you have these high quality files that you can start with. You don't even have to open up your project. Okay, but the final step uh, of archiving your project is to consolidate. If you're coming from other video editing software, you might know this more as trimming your project. Now the idea behind a trim or a consolidate is to take uh, your 12-minute program or whatever length it is and back up or save only those clips that you actually used in your final program and actually only save uh, the portions of the clips that you used. So rather than have a 500 gigabyte uh, project with all of the media that you brought in when you were uh, just starting out your program, you end up with a archive of only about 20 or 30 gigs. And uh, this makes it very convenient to have stowed away on some uh, backup hard drive uh, to have just the actual program itself backed up. And uh, that way you can take the, the consolidated programs that you've done over the last two or three years. If you're going on a little trip, you can take that little hard drive with you and should a client call you up, you can quickly make a change even though you're on travel. Okay, well, let's, let's back up this program. Let's consolidate it. Uh, where we find that is under the uh, Save icon. Here it is here, Consolidate Project. Oh, before we do that, let's uh, cancel that out. Just a couple of housekeeping things that we need to do. If all you want to do is uh, consolidate or back up the, uh, the main program that you have uh, in this sequence, and not back up the material that you may have uh, on uh, other sequences on your timeline, what you should do is first of all close these sequences. So just right click on any sequence that you do not want to uh, consolidate and close that sequence. And as long as they are closed, they're not on the timeline in EDIA 6, uh, you will not be backing those up when you make a consolidate. I have to say that uh, Kudos goes to EDIUS uh, programmers for uh, really doing a lot of work on the Consolidate tool. I've done a little experimenting with it and I can say that I believe that the Consolidate tool has finally arrived and uh, is uh, working great and uh, working as expected. And uh, so if you have been working in previous versions of EDIUS and have tried this Consolidate tool in the past and it hasn't quite worked out the way you thought it should and have stopped using it, I'd like to recommend that uh, in this version, EDIUS 6, uh, all is well and uh, Consolidate is a wonderful tool to use. So let's go ahead and uh, with our sequence chosen here that we want to back up, start our Consolidate tool. Now let's just uh, look at our options here. First of all, we probably would never want to uh, consolidate our project to the current project location. The idea is we want to get this backed up and saved to a separate hard drive. And uh, so let's choose uh, Save Project to a folder and uh, browse to our backup drive here. And we can even probably stick it in the same folder here that we have our AVI and MOV files under uh, Mongolia Backups. 
Okay, now under settings, uh, EDIUS does give you a number of options here of uh, what you can do with the Consolidate tool. Cleanup, uh, if you read the little note here, it says this will clean up the hard drive. Files that are not used in the project will be deleted. So you probably don't want to do that. Um, especially when we're working in a tapeless society these days and, uh, and, and you don't want to run the risk of uh, losing your media for good, you uh, probably would never want to use uh, the cleanup option. Backup, choosing this option, um, what it does is not only save your 12-minute program, it actually goes and saves all of the clips that you accessed and, and imported into this program when you started your project and uh, there are times perhaps when you might want to use this option uh, especially if you've got a lot of empty hard drives lying around and you want to fill them up uh, for example let's say you know that two months down the road your client is going to want to make a half hour program uh, from this material and uh, if you just saved or consolidated the 12 minute program uh, when you went to make the 30-minute program, you're not going to have any other material to work with. And so if you uh, know that that is something that's going to happen, you might want to choose this backup um, uh, option. And then you have the option of backup with no trimming. What that uh, probably means is that in addition to uh, not only saving all of the files that you have in all of your bins, uh, it'll also save all of the files in their entirety that you have on on your timeline uh, without any trimming taking place and you'll notice up here that uh, the required space to do this is actually 330 gigabytes uh, even more than what I have left on my hard drive space so it's giving me a little warning there by being in uh, red uh, this is going to take more than what your hard drive uh, has available but like I say, we probably wouldn't want to do that unless we know that we're going to be coming back to this project and, and want to have just w everything on one hard drive so that you can easily start up the program again. Backup and cleanup, if we chose that, it uh, brings it right down to just 21 gigs. But unfortunately, what it's going to do is delete files from your hard drives that you probably don't want to delete. Really what we're looking for here, so that we're not deleting files that we don't want to delete, but saving a, a short program that we can access in the future, we want to go with the custom. And uh, this way we can select exactly what we want to do. And you'll notice that uh, with the options that I have selected here, remove unused clip in timeline leave only areas used in timeline and copy used files to project folder and uh, this uh, really what it means is kind of awkward English I know it's a translation from Japanese probably what it's saying is that we're only going to uh, save those files that are on your open sequence in your timeline and uh, we're going to take a copy of those files and place them on your backup drive. And you can choose how much margin you want on each end of every clip. Uh, if you want, you can, uh, right now it's defaulting to two, you could set that to one and save just a little bit of hard drive space. You can see it drops down to actually 18 gigabytes. Well, uh, we've, well, as we look here, we see that actually went down to zero. You don't want to do that really. Um, in fact, I probably would like to just push that up to uh, three. And what this does is it saves all of the clips on your timeline and gives you three seconds on each end of every clip as a kind of a buffer zone. That way, if your client should call you up uh, six months down the road and uh, says, you know, I sure would like to have a Spanish version of that pr program, and uh, you send out your script for translation, you get it back and you find that uh, your translator has uh, added a few extra flowery words here and there which makes your program too long. When your Spanish narrator does the narration, it just runs longer than your English version. Well, having this three-second handle on each end of every clip allows you some room to spread out your program, make it grow a little bit, make your timeline grow a little bit to accommodate a new language.
Okay, and then we'll leave this last one unchecked. Again, we don't want Edius inadvertently uh, deleting uh, our camera media from our source drives. Okay, and with all of these selected, we can go ahead and hit OK. Edius will probably uh, present you with this little warning dialog box. And it looks a little scary, I know, when it says, these clips cannot be trimmed. And uh, you may worry that, oh dear, my consolidate's not going to really work. I don't think I'm going to get a good backup because it, it just can't you know, trim these, these files. But really what it is saying is that uh, all of these files, even though they will be saved and backed up, because of the nature of these file formats, we can't trim them or make them shorter. So for example, WAV files, MP3 files, uh, anything else going on here? Looks like that's all. There are some other file formats that EDIUS just will not trim. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be saved in your program. All it means is that they're going to be saved, the f those files are going to be saved in their entirety, whereas all of the rest of the files will be trimmed. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, feel good about that and say yes. Okay, and uh, trimming the file, uh, depending on the size of your project and the speed of your computer, uh, it might take 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes. All right, we're coming up to the end of our trim here, and uh, we'll see what happens to our project. Actually, what happens is Edius will close the project that you have been working on, and now open up your consolidated project so that the project that you end up with on your screen is actually your consolidated project that you have trimmed down not your original project so now what we have is a project that only has the media that was on our timeline in that sequence uh, with the three-second handle on each side. And as we now go over to our uh, file folders and uh, look through our bin window, we see that the only clips that are left in each of our file folders is uh, the clips that we actually ended up using on our timeline. All of the rest of your clips are no longer referenced in this consolidated project. Now, if you have, uh, as I mentioned, tried to use Consolidate before, you'll see that there are major improvements uh, to the Consolidated tool, which makes me very happy. I'm just beaming here now. This is actually the first uh, trim, or the first uh, Consolidate that I have done with Edia 6, and uh, it's just wonderful to see all of the respective media now in uh, their proper folders. It used to be that they just disappeared, and they were, <laughs> they were no longer... Uh, showing up in your bin at all. The only ones that showed up were the ones that the EDIUS could not trim. And the rest were no longer in your bins. The only place that it was referenced was on your timeline. But now we see that uh, they are still in the folders, the original folders that they were in, nicely organized and arranged. So I'm very pleased about that. And so if you have been avoiding the Consolidate tool because it's just been a little bit odd and buggy, uh, I can uh, totally recommend it now. It is a wonderful tool and it works as it should. Okay, well I believe that that is it for archiving your project.